Good morning everyone, good morning world, good morning girls and guys. Hi, hello, my name is CJ, and I am back again with another art narrated time lapse video for us to take a look at and learn a thing or two from. Again, I've mentioned this before, this is my jam. I just look at all my recordings, old, old recordings of me doing artwork and I just make commentaries on it and whatnot, you know, so hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two. So yeah. Today we're doing another speed paint. It's the summer of speed paints, I feel like, because I've picked a bunch of speed paints for me to comment on, and uh, this is one of them. <laughs> so yeah, again, as I've mentioned before, I am part of the Daily Speed Paint group in Facebook. Do check us out. It's a great group. Um, we The admins post four prompts every day for you to pick from, and you give yourself 30 minutes to do a network. That's it. Just 30 minutes. Ooh. <laughs> yeah very tough to do artwork in that time frame but it is doable uh so yeah but for today the prompt that i picked was summer fairy and i kid you not i had a hard time trying to figure out what um to do for summer fairy i mean it's pretty obvious that fairy denotes like some mythical creature or some sort that has wings, obviously, right? I mean, everyone knows this. Everyone knows what a fairy is. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out like a composition in my head and I just, I could not for the life of me come up with anything um, as an inspiration just off the top of my head. So I decided to go through some of my favorite sites to gain some form of inspiration, right? And, you know, while I was browsing through photos in pixels.com, uh, another great site, another great resource. Um, they have photos for um, people to use in their art projects and whatnot, such as the cases, this one that I'm using. But you know, I was just perusing through their photos and whatnot, not really finding anything in particular. And I think if I'm not wrong, this was like one of the featured photos. Uh, this might, uh, this particular photo by Carolina, Carolina Grabowski. Um, if I'm not wrong, this photo was in a feature page of some sort. It was like in the front page or something. And so, you know, I saw the photo and and I thought it was kind of cool, right? I, I love the pose of the dog. Uh, he seems really cool. He seems really laid back, just hanging out and whatnot. And just like that particular pose was what called me to him. And instantly I saw the image in my head. I'm like, I could put wings on this dog and call him Summer Fairy. So it's a total stretch on the prompt. But hey, I mean, that's the great thing about the prompts is that people will interpret it different ways, right? Um, and so I was like, well, okay, that might be like a cool, unique thing to do. And so, yeah, I went ahead and grabbed this photo by Carolina Grabowski. I uh, use it as my form of inspiration um, to do for this particular prompt. And yeah, <laughs> I ended up using this uh, particular artwork too in another project just because I thought that that dog sitting down just seems like he's really cool and laid back and I just I have to use him against the character so I did but yeah so that's where the idea came from that's how the idea evolved um it was all inspired by Carolina Grabowski's photo thank you Carolina for a great photo um and so yeah, going now, or talking now about the procedures and the process and what's going on. Um, so, um, I did a totally different approach on mine. Um, typically, I do the sketch and then I lay down the colors and then I smudge things around. But this time, I decided that I didn't want to cut. I didn't want to start with an empty canvas. And so what I did was I took Carolina's uh, original photo, right? And originally I was just going to use it. I was gonna, just going to smudge that photo. I do this all the time, actually. Sometimes I do a blur, a Gaussian blur, where everything's just blurry. And then I'll use that as my uh, starting canvas. So there's some colors there, just so that it's not starting out uh, with just plain white. 
or just one plain color so just already some colors there um but this time around i decided instead of doing a gaussian blur i was just going to do the smudge blur with the with the textured uh blending brush which is what i did uh, and that's what you saw me do for the past four minutes i started smudging things around and then i realized that there's not really a whole lot of color information in that original follow photo because it's mostly browns and whites which brown and white is obviously neutral colors it doesn't have um a whole lot of color information basically so i decided to throw in uh, a few colors uh, with color mode so i took a bunch of blues and oranges and reds and just kind of just put it uh well set my brush in in color and then just color some areas so that when i do end up blending everything it has some form of color information which is pretty much what we ended up looking at right now uh, it's really cool though because like the the way the colors ended up working they ended up um, having a pastel hue to it which is perfect because and well not really necessarily perfect pastel typically refers to spring uh, rather than summer summer is really more green but it still does kind of have the vibe of the sunny day i mean that's one of the things that pastels uh, kind of give off is that there's a, this vibe of like a very sunny day which is kind of like what I'm going for so um, when I did what I did with with the background when I added the colors and smudged everything around I just absolutely love how it ended up looking like uh, this nice pastel background um, and I love nondescript backgrounds too where the horizon line is missing um, I pointed this out in one of my earlier paintings that I posted earlier this year, talking to fishes. Um, I love that bit. I love that particular illustration is because it has a nondescript background, no horizon line present. Such a, um, and that's the case with this particular illustration too. There's really no horizon line, so everything's just kind of like up in the air as to like what's going on composition-wise. But it totally works because all that negative space is just totally interacting with the foreground so um i love it uh and obviously the foreground's more darker browns and a little more saturated colors so it totally stands out against the pastel background so yeah uh, i thought that was a very effective uh accident of sorts that just happened so yeah but as soon as i smudged that background what i did uh is i started flipping it around looking for a composition idea and then when I flipped it off to its side, I saw the potential. I saw the wings, basically, is, is what I saw. Which you saw me draw the outline of it. Because I was like, oh, look, there's the wings right there. And then the dog's going to be this other blob, you know. And so once I saw that, I knew that this was going to be my composition. So I basically just um, went with that. Um and it's really unique because, I mean, even though I'm kind of sort of outlining right now, um, I typically start out with an outline, like a much darker outline. This one, I'm really more blocking out shapes. Um, I didn't know why I erased. Why did I erase again? Uh, what was my whole intent on um, starting all over? Uh, you know what, I think the reason why I decided to start all over is because I feel that the size was getting too small with that initial sketch, so I decided to just block out things more uh, so that I could get the exact uh, size of the dog. And I think that's the reason why I restarted over. That sketch was getting too fine and too small so yeah i'm blocking out shapes but yeah so um there's this really unique process in this particular video because it's not my standard process my standard process is i typically do the sketch and then i lay down uh very unique colors um i i don't pay too much attention to it i just typically try to make a mess because that's the whole point is trying to make a mess and then as soon as I have the colors and the outline and as much everything into recognizable shapes and then I do the details on top of that which the detailing is 
Um, the detailing process is that I delineate my edges, make my edges sharper so my shapes read clearer. Um, I accentuate the shadows and I add highlights. So I do that over and over again in pieces of um, the illustration. In this particular instance, um, wow, okay, so I went back to sketching instead of uh, blocking shapes out. I really thought I blocked out everything. Um, but yeah, the unique process that I have on here is that I really wasn't doing a whole lot of sketch. I mean, I just did a sketch outline just now just to kind of indicate to me where the dog was going to be. But it's not like my typical line sketch. It's all just very, very blocky. Um, so yeah, my whole approach to this illustration is so much more different than my typical one. Um, I do like to block things out and then slowly carve things out uh, from that initial shape. Um, I have done that numerous times before. Um, so it's not like a foreign uh, procedure to me. Um, but yeah, lately I just started doing the whole line sketch again just because I feel like it's so much more effective just to try and get the idea down and help me with the conversation. So yeah. But yeah, so now that I have that initial shape, what I did just now was just added a color dodge layer uh, just to kind of indicate where um, the light source is going to be. So clearly the light source is going to be coming from the right. And then obviously I'm adding my shadows. So yeah. The other unique thing that I did was that I didn't smudge. Uh, typically after this multiply process right here, I would merge everything in a layer. In one layer and then smudge everything around again once more and then do my detailing process but i didn't actually do any of that i just went straight to detailing this which was uh very cool as well so yeah but that's what you're gonna see me do in the next few minutes so just hang out and watch and just see the artwork unfold
So as you can see, I've pretty much just started detailing uh, my illustration, my painting. Uh, and then obviously I have Carolina's uh, photograph, Miss Grabowski's uh, photograph on my left, on onto the left of my illustration, just so that I could refer to it and look at it while I'm painting. Um, it's pretty straightforward just looking at it and just kind of figuring out where the lights are and whatnot. Um, painting animals with fur or anything with fur and some form of coloring is really tricky because it's hard to tell if like the hue that you're painting is because it's lighter because that's where the light is hitting or it's lighter just because it's the color of the fur. So. Um, I kind of had a hard time trying to figure out like where the light areas will be. Um, well, I was also having a hard time simply because I decided to change the main light source, which the main light source is coming from the right. But then I was, you know, heavily inspired by the photograph and how the sky's light, not necessarily like the main source of light, but just the sky in general. Uh, I like how it's casting, um some lighter areas on top of like the dog and whatnot so there's kind of like this generic light that's coming from uh straight above so i started to try to emulate it uh and trying to make sure that it kind of goes well with um what i've already put down as the main light source so yeah i was really careful at making sure that i don't go overboard um, brightening that part when really the right side should be the brightest part of the illustration so yeah and then yeah it's pretty much just me straightforward just detailing so yeah and I guess before this video ends I really wanted to point out that I'm really grateful for Pexels and Carolina for at least sharing this photograph for me to work on and the video before this I was heavily talking about uh, image rights and the Fair Use Act and whatnot. Um, technically, this photograph that I'm painting right now does land very much <laughs> in the Fair Use Act just simply because the photo is absolutely different from the end result of, of the illustration, which is exactly the point I was trying to make with Prototype 60, that earlier video from last month. Um, the ending result is so different from the original photo as it's, it's not the same um, So, you know what I do sometimes with people's photographs is a little Murky especially since if I do an, a straight-up photo study if I do a straight-up photo study where I just copy Carolina's uh, photograph exactly as is that um, would land in hot water if her photo is not available to be used in such a manner um, such as the case in the next uh, video that I have the the one that's coming up um, my particular inspiration for that illustration it turns out um, is copyrighted um, by West N61 from Getty Images so I went ahead and bought like a license for it just so that I could use it and post it on obviously my YouTube because I'm all about you know honoring artist rights and whatnot I mean if I don't want my artwork getting stolen then I better not, <laughs> I better make sure that I'm not really stealing people's artwork all the time you know so yeah I just wanted to point that out that I'm really grateful that sites like pixels.com and like all this other resource sites that I go to, photobash and textures.com, they all provide uh, free photos for us to use um, so that we could practice our craft, which is really cool. Really amazing that photographers do that. So, um, Flickr at one point has uh, a bunch of photos that was available for use too. I've gotten some photographs there before that I use in my personal art projects, which is great. So yeah. But yeah, going back to the illustration, uh, this is pretty much done. I'm basically just making it uh, clearer what is going on in the scene. So I'm just adding a few more lines here and there, sharpening that wings, for example, just so that we know that it's attached to the dog and that he's supposed to be the summer fairy. Um, again, a very loose interpretation of the prompt, but I love it because I think it's so cool. <laughs> so yeah, 
and I think I did a little bit more work on the background um, because uh, that darkish brownish spot behind the wings I think I erased it a little bit just because I think it's a little too dark for my taste yeah there I go I'm erasing it a little bit just a tad bit and just making it more bluish so yeah but I am absolutely happy with this speed paint. This speed paint I thought turned out very, very cool. Uh, so yeah, and I'm very grateful for my inspiration, uh, Miss Carolina Grabowski's photograph. So, but yeah, um, really cool painting. And that's it. Uh, that's the end of the illustration. Thank you guys for watching it with me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night. Mm -hmm.